Sometimes we have a natural intro. Yeah. Sometimes we don't. This is rolling right versions of other games. Just kind of like, think of a pun, couldn't think of it. What's up everybody, my name is Nick Murphy. I'm Mike Murphy. We are the Brothers Murph, and this is kind of, uh, this list and the next list uh, is actually kind of a, uh, uh, Related. An idea that came out of a list that we did a little while ago, which was like top 10 gaming sequels, like sequels to board games. We kept coming up with the, all these different ideas for stuff. And then we realized we're like, oh, you know what? I think this could be its own list. And this is one of those. This is top 10 roll and write versions of games. Yes. Because those are kind of sequels right. in their own way. But we're like, you know what? We're we can make a whole list out of just that. Yeah. So let's have that be its own thing. And here we are. Absolutely. So this is going to be games that you have seen that now include pencils and usually dice. And they kind of try to re implement a uh, the parent board game, yeah. as we've said. So we're gonna go right into it with our number 10. Our number 10 is King Domino Duel. We are very, very excited about this game because we love two player versions of the game and we love roll and write versions of the games. And this is both of those things. We really like King Domino by Bruno Catala and we heard there's gonna be a two player roll and write version of the game called King Domino Duel. And we are very, very excited and we do like it a lot. It's not our favorite roll and write. Obviously it's number 10 on this list, but we do really enjoy it. But basically we're gonna roll these two dice and these two dice are gonna have different symbols on there, different shields is what they are. And then you're gonna choose those two dice and then the dice put them together and that makes a domino because you have one symbol and then another symbol. It could be the same symbol as well. And then you're putting it in a little grid, kind of King Domino style, where you have to match your domino to something else that's out there. And you're essentially trying to get, um, same kind of thing, crowns in an area to score points, basically. And it's just a really, really cool, small little version of the game that we actually really like a lot. It's one of those, it's one of those games, like that I think everyone has, where you don't play it very often. But whatever you do, you're always like, that's right, this game is great. I like this game a lot. Why don't we play this more? You know, everyone has those kinds of games. King Domino Duel is one of those games for us, but it is a, it is a really cool, pretty similar version to King Domino while also being its own thing. And it works really well. I like King Domino Duel a lot, and that's why it's number 10. Our number nine is Lost Cities, the roll and write. This takes uh, Lost Cities, a very popular Reiner Knizia two player game. It makes it from two to five players. Now you are rolling dice that are gonna give you a number uh, and color combination that you will make. And like Lost Cities, you always have to place down a number that is the same or higher. Rather in this version, you put the same number, but you always have to ascend. You can't go backward. If you put a 10 down first, you're gonna have a short journey because you can't go lower than 10. Uh, as you move forward. So this is a great job of recreating that idea of like going on expeditions based on those different colors and really choosing what to invest in and what to ignore. Because as soon as you take off on your journey, you've spent a bunch of money, uh, your points and stuff to go on this journey. And if you don't make it very far, you're gonna end up with a negative score in that expedition. There's also multipliers you can do if you really like Red's gonna go great for me. You can bet big and multiply stuff. And if you don't make it to the positive, you will multiply your negative number. So this does a great job of using roll and write mechanisms, some dice uh, mitigation and things you can kind of pass if you don't like any of the combinations and really choosing which of those expeditions, those different colors to go up on, really trying to maximize on that. There's some bonuses along the way. And I really like it that it moves really quick. Um, it's something that you, if you're the active player, choose something that everyone else chooses from among the remainder. Uh, from the options, and I think it works really well, and it's just quick and easy. That's uh, Lost Cities, roll and write. Our number eight is the Isle of Cats Explore and Draw. Now this is interesting because this is kind of, this kind of came out out of the pandemic because Isle of Cats was a really cool card drafting game, game. We were trying to save all these cats from this island. Really fun game that we like a lot. But when the pandemic hit, um, they came out with essentially a remote way to play the game. That way you can play over things like Zoom. You could play it and as long as one person had the game, you know, everyone else can kind of play along. And it was a really, really cool thing to do in the middle of a kind of unprecedented times that we were in, in the pandemic and still are in, unfortunately. And so then they eventually made this into like more of an actual game. And, and they, it's pretty darn similar to the remote edition with some slight changes. 
but it's really, really cool. So you have Isla Cat, so you're trying to, you have your boat, you're trying to fill it with all these different cat polyominal tiles and stuff. But in this case, what you do is you put out the cards that you can draft, you put out into like a little grid, at least four by three. So you have uh, three, four columns of three cards and you choose a column that you want to use. And it might have cats in there. It might have lessons. Lessons are the way you score in the game for the most part. Or it might have treasure kind of in the same way. And you get a column and then you put that somewhere in your boat. Kind of, again, just like Isle of Cats. And it works really, really well. And there's also these different things you can do to kind of break the rules. So sometimes you can take a row instead of a column or things like that. And that way you can kind of get out a little bit of jams or you kind of get the stuff you really, really want, but it's limited in what you can do. But it's really, really cool version of Isle of Cats. And it's to the point now where like, I like this version of Isle of Cats pretty much as much as I like the normal version of Isle of Cats. And it plays faster, which is cool too. So whenever we play Isle of Cats, it's kind of a 50-50 toss up of which one I wanna play because they're both really fun, but they both still live in that universe and still work really, really well. So the Explorer draw for of Isle of Cats is really, really fun. I suggest you check it out. It's number eight. So number seven is Long Shot, the dice game. This is uh, based off of Long Shot, which was made a long time ago. And then now it's another horse racing game put into roll and write and erase and write again form. So in this game, you have these horses that are going around a track and you are betting on horses. You can potentially purchase horses uh, that then will win you money if they come in first, second or third. Uh, and you're just rolling out a die, which will activate a horse uh, and give them some movement. So maybe horse four moves forward three spaces. And then based off of that horse card, you have my other horses that might move a space forward as well. So it's all about trying to mitigate something that you can't really control, which I really enjoy. Like if I'm sitting at, at, a, at a horse track and betting on the race, I cannot influence that race directly. There's not much I can do. I can just hope to guess right based off of the information I have and guess on the winner. So as the game goes, you can place bets continually on horses. So if someone gets out to a rip roar and lead, you can start betting on horse number three. But with the dice, sometimes horse number three does not move for a while and all of a sudden the pack catches up. And so it does a really good job of giving you that idea of the tension of a horse race where you're like, come on, horse number three's gotta go. Oh my gosh, horse eight's breaking late. They're gonna make the win, you know? And it really does feel like that exciting horse race where you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But all you can kind of do is cheer and stuff. And with all the rolling riding thing, you can, do some set collection. You can go to the concession stand, which gives you these bonuses you can get, which might make you place uh, extra bets. You can purchase horses, which might give you a power and also give you more access to money. You want to have the most money at the end of the game. So I really enjoy the kind of boisterous horse race feeling that this game comes. And because of the dice luck, it really is always a pretty close race that you don't quite know how it's going to turn out, which is really exciting. So that is Long Shot, the dice game. Number six is a game that we picked up because it was cheap and we were like, it'll probably be good to play on a plane. And we actually really like it. And that's Patchwork Doodle. This is the roll and write version of Patchwork, shocker. This is actually really, really fun. We like this game a lot. And it's, again, we kind of got it as a throwaway and we really enjoy it. But this is a game where there is going to be um, a ring of cards and the cards are going to have um, polyominal tiles on them. And then you have a little meeple kind of goes around and lands on cars and you, whatever card it lands on, you then have to put that shape into your patchwork quilt, patchwork style. And it just works really, really well. Everyone is going off the same card. So basically there's not a lot of manage, you know, you can also play with an infinite amount of people if you want to. And it's just really cool. Again, there's a couple of ways you can break the rules. So there's, I think three things you can use one allows you to cut the patch in half. So if you have like a big L, but you don't want this part over here, you can use the special power and cut it out and then put it in. And it just works really, really well. And it's just very patchwork-like, but it's just a much smaller package. Because one thing about patchwork, I really like patchwork, but it takes a huge footprint because you need that big old ring of tiles, which is cool, but it just ends up, it's a game that looks like it's gonna be small and it kind of is, but Patchwork Doodle is that small. And if we play it on planes all the time, it's kind of become one of our favorite plane games. And we really, really enjoy it. So Patchwork Doodle is our number six and it's really, really fun. It's worth a pickup.
So number five takes a big old game and puts it into a pretty big roll and write. It's Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. This is a brand new uh, roll and write game that is based off of Dinosaur Island. So in this game, you are trying to build a dinosaur theme park, one that is complete with different types of dinosaurs and, and uh, different amenities, special buildings and specialists and things. It does a great job of taking the heart and soul of Dinosaur Island and those DNA dice and bringing it to a roll and write form where now you can draft different dice that'll give you DNA, that might give you money, security, all sorts of things like that. And then you're going to be writing and adding onto your two different sheets, the DNA you get, the money you earn, and that money might give you specialists, which give you different powers. Then you have to take all that stuff and build a park. You have to turn that DNA to build dinosaurs. You have to build roads so that you can create a pathway from all of your different exhibits or else they can't be viewed and you can't generate excitement from them. There's kind of a, an excitement uh, income engine where every time you run a tour of your park, you'll gain all these bonuses based off of how far you've traveled down your excitement. You'll gain them all every single time. So of course you wanna get as exciting as quick as you can to so trigger all these different types of bonuses. It's really fun. There's really cool uh, different special buildings and specialists that swap out from game to game, which will give a different feel because in this game, you might have this special building, which is gonna change the whole landscape of what you place where uh, and keeps a lot of variety and variability in the game. So that is Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. Our number four is Fleet the Dice Game. This is a game that our good friend Brant was evangelizing like crazy. He was constantly like, you play Fleet the Dice Game, play Fleet the Dice Game. He was like forcing people to play it out of Dice Tower East one time. Just absolutely like, you, you haven't played, what are you doing right now? We're playing it right now. And he just kind of made everyone play it. And it's really, really good. I actually very recently played the original Fleet. We had never played Fleet. We'd only ever played Fleet the Dice Game. And I'll tell you right now, I like the Dice Game more. I liked Fleet, but Fleet the Dice Game is really, really fun because you know what it is? It's combo-tastic. We love combos in roller rides. This is a game where you're putting out boats and you're going fishing, and then you have to get different licenses. Those licenses give you special powers. You then use that to fill in other stuff. And it's just one of those games where you get this, that then allows you to fill with something, anything you want in your whole board. And you fill that and that allows you to fill something else and you just boom, 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 boom. Combo, 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 fish, 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 fish. It's really, really fun. Just an absolute banger of a roll and ride. And Fleet is good, but Fleet the Dice game is amazing. And so this is one of those games where I'm like, man, I really like this game more than the original, but it is really, really fun. If you haven't tried Fleet the Dice game, listen to Brant, Brant's amazing. And he was right, this game's great. It's really, really good. So number three is Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. This is the first ever roll and write game that we played. We in fact played this long before we ever played Castles of Burgundy. And so it was this kind of thing that we really enjoyed this game. Uh, and then we played Castles of Burgundy and then went back to Castles of Burgundy, the dice game and realized, hey, this does a good job of feeling like Castles of Burgundy, which is what you hope for on a list like this. So in this game, you are now rolling dice that are gonna give you a color, and a number, and you need to then build out your kind of estate similar to Castle of Burgundy. You have to add on to adjacent hexagonals. You have to build out from where you've built before. Uh, and then certain colors like the mines and the shipping uh, lanes uh, need certain numbers. Like the shipping can only have fives and sixes. You can only have threes and fours in the mines. Animals, uh, you just wanna have uh, the same number in however many spaces that is, and the higher the better. Um, in, in the worker or the building areas, you have to have all different numbers. It gives you all these different kind of classic roll and righty things, but it feels very Castle of Burgundy-ish because you can use your workers to then choose any number you want. You don't have to go off of what's based on the dice. There's these monks that can allow you to ignore the color and choose whatever color you want. The castles give you various different other bonuses. They can kind of be anything similar to the castles and Castles of Burgundy. Uh, and so it does a really good job of creating that fun dynamic of like needing to match color, now with numbers because of the dice. Um, in Castle of Burgundy, of course, you're using dice as well, which dictate everything you can do. So it really works well in a roll and write, but also does feel distinctly different because you're drawing on your sheet. The bonuses work slightly different. It does a good job of really inhabiting that soul of Castle of Burgundy though.
Number two is a game that we are so excited when we heard about it, and this is Lantern's Dice. Again, you take a game we already love, you make a roll and write version of it, and we're super into it. So Lantern's Dice is really a sequel to Lanterns, because Lanterns, you're putting out all of these um, Lanterns on the lake as a dedication to the Emperor, and then Lantern's Dice is right after that, there's a big firework display. So now all the Lanterns are already in the lake, and you're covering up those Lanterns with fireworks. It's really kind of a cool, sequel to it in terms of the theme. And one thing about Lantern's Dice, which is interesting, is in our opinion, it's actually heavier than Lantern's. Lantern's is not a heavy game. Lantern's Dice is also not a super heavy game, but it is more to think about than Lantern's. Lantern's is very, very chill. Lantern's Dice is kind of a tough puzzle because you're gonna be rolling out these four dice. Those dice are gonna have lantern colors on them. And then you roll into this cool little tray and then that tray you can kind of orient because there's four dice in there, like two and two, and you orient it and it's kind of like lanterns. Whatever dice is pointing at you, that's what you get to fill in on your little sheet. And you're filling in this stuff, trying to get these essentially polyomino tile shapes that are fireworks. So some are big L's, so you have to fill in all the lanterns in the big L, and then you can take a firework and put it on top of it. It's kind of like dedicating to the emperor in the normal game. Really, really fun, really, really cool. And there are a couple of different powers you can have because you're you're gaining these kind of like medallions and then you can spend those medallions to do these to do these powers, which allow you to break some of the rules. And it just works. It just works really, really well. And again, it's kind of interesting because it's a little bit heavier than the normal game. And so if you like Lanterns, check out Lanterns Dice. It's a really, really great sequel kind of addendum to Lanterns that works really, really well. And it's our number two. We love it. Our number one was the inspiration for this whole list. It is Rajas of the Ganges, the Dice Charmers. This is a dice rolling, uh, dice drafting version of Rajas of the Ganges, which is a game that we really, really love uh, by the brands. And um, in this one, you are doing the same stuff as in Rajas of the Ganges. You have a money track and you have a fame track and you need those two tracks to cross each other. They're going opposite directions around your board. And now you do this all on your own little player board. And what you're doing is you're building pathways similar to in Rajas where you'd be placing out tiles to build pathways to different bonus points and everything like that. You are gaining goods, selling those goods at markets. You are moving up and now backwards sometimes on a river. You're doing all the same stuff in Rajas of the Ganges, but it does it in a super duper combo-tastic way where it's all about kind of building out your paths, working on the river, and kind of getting to a point where you can then chain together several different combinations. Almost everything you do, if you get to a certain point on it, you're gonna trigger a combo on top of your normal action. So this game always includes an epic moment or two where you just chain off a bunch of stuff, you move way up on both your tracks, and you feel like you've got a lot done. And that's something that is immensely satisfying to us. Uh, we love the theming of Rajas of the Ganges. We think it's really interesting and beautiful and colorful. And the dice game does a great job of taking all that and giving you a slightly different feel while feeling very familiar, which is a nice thing because you kind of sit down, you're like, okay, I see how this is gonna go. And you only have to tell, talk about how things change and differ from the base game. You're kind of already halfway there, which uh, I think is a good thing. It makes it very easy to get into and play and then provides a beefy roll and write game where it's all about those sweet, sweet combos. So there's a lot to enjoy with this one. And that's why it's our number one roll and write based off a of parent game game. That's it. That's a roll. That was the whole thing. Indeed. Talk to we love rolling rides. We're a huge, huge fan. Or flipping fills or whatever you want to call them. I, call them. I really like when we really love them. Yeah, I really like when they I like when they have game space off parent games because it's really cool to see like how do they get the heart and soul of that game and into this kind of different do. mechanism. Yeah, very yeah. often they really, really do. You're like, wow, this is this does feel like the base game, but its own thing, you know. Very much it's so. and that's really, really cool. So down in the comments below, let us know. Do you like these kinds of games? Do you like when they take, like we get very excited. Like we hear like when Raja's Dice got announced, we were like, wow. are moon. you kidding me? One of our favorite games, we turned to a roll right. We are so, so excited. So let us know down in the comments below what your favorite kind of roll right implementation of a game you already love is. Yeah. And let us know what kind of list you would like to see us do next. Put it down in the comments below. Absolutely. Until next time, I've been Mike. I'm Nick. We are the Brothers Murph and we'll see you in the next top 10. Bye everybody.